Following an awful crash in final practice for the 1990 Pepsi 400 Cup race at Daytona, Dave Marcus was left without a backup car. Marcus had hit a stalled Darrell Waltrip coming into the trial after both were involved in a multi-car pileup. The crash totaled both cars, leaving Waltrip with a broken leg. Marcus somehow made it through the crash without serious injuries, but shaken up. As mentioned before, Marcus did not have a backup car and looked at a potential withdrawal. However, help came from a longtime friend and fellow independent driver owner, number 70, J.D. McDuffie, who had failed to qualify his blue Pontiac for the race. It was the perfect deal for Marcus as his sponsor, Big Apple Markets, was a blue paint scheme, and J.D. already running a blue car made it a perfect fit, so they quickly re-decaled J.D.'s number 70 into Dave's number 71, putting a number 71 right over Dave. JD's number 70. The plan was for Dave to start the race and for JD to take over the car up to the first lap, as that was the requirement for a driver to get credit for points, and then for JD to drive the rest of the race. The pit crew was a combo of both Dave's and JD's guys and used the tires that Dave was going to use for the race on JD's car. Come race day, Dave started his number 71 at the rear as he was coming to pit road on the opening lap. A huge crash in front of the field happened involving over 20 cars, meaning a good finish was still in place for the 71 team. The driver change was made during the lengthy caution for the lap one pileup, meaning the number 71 did not lose many laps in the process. With JD now behind the wheels, the possibility of a top 15, top 20 was easily in sight. JD ran a clean race in his Pontiac. Sadly, his car just wasn't up to speed, being passed by leaders lap after lap and even some of the damaged cars that had come back out on track. Nevertheless, JD carried on and ran in the mid-20s for most of the race. Following a bit more attrition, JD found himself in 20th place, just 15 laps down with less than 10 laps to go. However, with just 5 laps to go, the great story ended as McDuffie lost control just past the tri-oval and ahead of the leader at the time, Dale Earnhardt, and crashed into the inside wall. Third end in terms of action on the racetrack. Spin right in front of Earnhardt down in turn one, right in front of our leader. In 71, Dave Marcus. The yellow comes out. J.D. McDuffie is the driver in that automobile. It looks like it's a 71 automobile. And the caution flag is out. And let's go let all the cars drive up on the back bumper of Earnhardt. Ned, is he going to pit? That's the question. I don't I got. think so. I don't think so. Since they didn't take on tires during the green flag pit stop, I don't think that he'll come in now with just a handful of laps to go to pit. Well, we're going to take a commercial break here and see how all this shakes out as we... It was determined that J.D. had suffered an engine failure and the oil on the rear tires had caused him to lose control. J.D.'s day was over, but had still accumulated enough laps to keep a 20th place finish for Dave Marcus. By technicality, it was J.D.'s best finish since 1987 and the final top 20 finish of his career. It would also be the final play race that a McDuffie-owned car would run in. Marcus would return in his own equipment at the following week at Pocono and would continue to field his own car until his retirement in 2002, while J.D. McDuffie sadly lost his life just over a year later in a crash at Watkins Glen International. This is a fun story of how everyone in the NASCAR garage, especially the independents, were truly one big family and always lended a helping hand when needed. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this NASCAR short story. Like and subscribe to the channel, turn on that bell for notifications, and we'll see you all next time.